sad on here. They mean munching Chris. No, no, I'll just. I might have to go to the loo for it. Uh, no, you see it? You see it? Apologies were a little bit late. Uh, fair play to, to Mark, he's studying for, for a colleague that is no longer with the business, so he's uh, performed aerobics and uh, we're able to keep this event going. He's been stuck in traffic for, well, I think I spoke to you at half five, so yeah, he's, had a, he's had a really good evening so far. Um, be gentle with him because I know what you guys are like in particular. Oh, so, uh, Mark Fraggett from BT, I'm going to throw it to you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Apologies again for the delay. Of, uh, I should learn not to put my trust in satellite navigation, I think, honestly. Yeah, but you're early with that day, look. May the 18th. Well, it's May 2018. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've just been generic. So what we're going to talk to you about tonight, just to give you a brief overview of what BT Cables is, very brief, and then I'm going to talk about the construction product regulation for cables. Any uh, questions and answers, then, we'll close. Um, so BT Cables, we are um, essentially a business that BT took over in 2012 because um, it was a private owned business before and it was in administration so BT needed to, to maintain their, um, their supply chain for, for their sort of access network infrastructure. But um, as a part of BT we also supply into all of the different market segments. Uh, this is just a slightly more explanation of it, slightly deeper explanation of it. So um, we don't really do power cables, but we do the majority of data and communication cables. So in buildings, we offer fire systems, BMS systems, security, data, voice cables, and we also have our own um, branded 
structured cabling system. Um, I mean, this is the, the primary, um, primary sort of raison d'etre for, for the, the business before. It's, it's, it's um, maintaining the copper access network for, for BT Open Reach. And we also have um, PADS approval for, for those of you that were interested in railway projects at all. We have PADS approval for a number of um, for communication sort of signaling type of cables. The, um, the facility, as it says there, the facility in Manchester has been um, established in 1895, so there's over 120 years of cable making experience. Um, it was owned for a long time by BS BICC. The last few years has been a sort of a number of owners. But as I've said, it, the business has uh, has been fundamental for, for, for BT Open Reach in there and maintaining the access network. And the, I mean, this is just a picture of the site, so it's quite a large site. We've got a, a large um, production capability, large warehousing and logistics capability. It's just a, this, that's just a brief overview of what we can actually do. And we're obviously uh, got accreditations to a, a number of organisations that you all know, such as LPCB, UL. We're members of the British Cables Association and for those of you who know the Approved Cables Initiative, which is a, which is it's an organisation to try and uh, reduce the number of counterfeit and um, poor quality cables in, in the UK. That's our little tagline. <coughs> so, in terms of the construction product regulation, which is a, a sort of primary reason for speaking to you tonight. Um, the construction products regulation lays down harmonised rules and methods for the marketing of construction products. So basically it intends that there's a common technical language across the EU and the EEA. We're actually not sure what's going to happen in, you know, depending on the Brexit situation, so you know, bear with us. But uh, as, as things stand, um, we are working under CPR. Um, and the for cables, it's only been only been running for um, for just <coughs> around about a year because the, it's been 25 years in the making in developing all the test standards and everything. So basically, what it what it's doing, it's it's making a, a system of harmonised technical specifications for testing. It's an agreed system of conformity assessment for product families, a framework of notified bodies, and its CE marking of product. So, as I said, it's not just cables, there's a, a number of things in the um, construction products regulation and cables is probably a, a very small part of that. Can I just ask one question? Um, does that cover just the cabling types you were referring to earlier or is it all cables? It covers everything, so yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll go on and explain <coughs> it a little bit further. But In terms of what the CPR covers, there are a number of categories. Mechanical resistance and stability, safety and fire, hygiene, health and environment, safety and accessibility and use protection against noise, energy economy, heat retention, and sustainable use of natural resources. All that the, the cable CPR is looking at is fire safety. And so the common technical language is to be applied to the manufacturers, the authorities of member states when they specify requirements, and the users such as yourself, the designers, the specifiers. And as I said, in cables, it's just reaction to fire performance, which, you know, after the events of, of the last 12, 18 months is, uh, is quite at the forefront of a lot of people's minds. So the, the, the framework document for all this is, a, is called EN50575. That co covers the, the methods of assessing the cables, methods of testing, type testing and systems of assessment, product performance declaration and labelling requirements. There's quite a lot of depth in this document. And, um, and the rules and, and regulations that we need to follow uh, are quite in depth. Um, but w and whilst it's mandatory to see mark the product, each member state is responsible for for actually regulating which class of performance must be used in each particular application. Um, there are lots of EU countries which are specifying <coughs> high levels of, of um, performance for hospitals. And you know other areas of <coughs> of high public um, public traffic. This uh, 
document in the, in the top right is the uh, official journal of the European Union which details the actual regulation itself. And so it's now written into UK law, it's in statute, and it, it actually is a criminal offence for non-compliance with, uh, with the CPR. But the UK government's not imposed any official requirements as such as yet. Um, so down to the uh, down to the regulation itself, C marking is the minimum. So the the sort of the minimum allowable level of fight performance is what you have to follow in the UK. But all that is changing. And the UK responsibility, the UK authority with responsibility is DCLG, although that's now changed. I can't remember what it's called anymore. It's the it's the Department for so that's the Department for Communities and Local Government. I think that's the department name's actually actually changed. But it's still through the Trading Standards Institute that the, uh, that the regulation is followed. So in terms of, to summarise the regulatory position, as I said, unlike some other EU and EEA countries, the UK has not decided to enforce any specific regulations as yet. Um, Germany and France have been at the forefront of the, uh, of the regulatory sort of process, and they have specific re requirements for specific applications. This B2CA might not mean anything to you at the moment, but I'm hopefully going to explain it in a, in a minute or two. For communication cables now, which is, is kind of our business, there's a recent publication of a document called BS6701, which is telecommunications equipment and telecommunications cabling, specification for installation, operation and maintenance. And CPR is a consideration in the current wiring regs, the, the rewrite of BS7671, the 18th edition. What's going to happen is BS6701 is going to be referenced in that, so it's going to become part of the regulation. So we're, we're going to have to follow the, uh, the mandates of BS6701. In lieu of, of government regulation, the minimum permissible Euro class for internal applications should be ECA. Um, there are de facto regulators such as London Underground, Transport for London, who have already, uh, have already opted for a, a high level of performance, which they've historically done anyway um, and as we've sort of alluded to before incidents such as Grenfell Tower will very likely expedite the UK government position in terms of regulation of construction products and building regulations as a whole um, so the Dame Judith review of building regulations and fire safety which the interim report is out now the, the full report is expected in June So back to BS 6701, um, it was published in December 17, it had been, a, it'd been a, a code of practice for um, installation of telecoms equipment previously, but the 2017 version was the first time that <coughs> there was any guidance on fire safety. Um, that decision was taken because of a high density of um, a lab category cables that go off building rises that go through buildings which have a you know, a high percentage of polythene in them, which is clearly very flammable. So there was a, there was a move to try and put a, a more risk-based approach on the um, installation of, of those types of cables. Um, the, the actual standard defines what an installation cable is. Um, it's a pretty loose, a, a loose definition which uh, we are currently working to uh, to put to make more concrete, but it's uh, cables intended for installation into pathways which are hidden below floors, above ceilings, and behind walls. I mean, the, the kind of ethos behind this is that if it can't be seen, then it, it needs to be um, a high rating. It needs to be um, it needs to be classed as an installation cable. In terms of what is a construction product, um, it's anything that is permanently um, installed in a construction works. So it's any product or kit which is produced and placed on the market for incorporation in a permanent manner in construction works or parts thereof inside the internal fire barrier. Um, and it's the performance of, performance of these products has an effect on the performance of the construction works with respect to the basic requirements of the construction works. Something's gone wrong here, but on the left that's a, a, a data cable as we've just been speaking about which as I said, in plenums, in, in, in rises, there are high quantities of, um, of these category lamp type of cables which have 
uh, high composition of uh, polythene and, and potentially other flammable materials, PVC perhaps. And a lot of these types of cables are not removed, so there's, there is an inherent fire risk when, uh, when that happens. The, the second cable is a BT cable. It's a um, CW1128. It's a uh, it, it, that cable runs from the green box to the telegraph box. So basically, it's outside. It shouldn't really have any impact on the construction works. But on the end, the railway cables. There are some which are in tunnels and station buildings, which will need to be CPR um, compliant because of the volume of public traffic going through them. So it's similar to the. Section 12 approach in London Underground. Sorry, CPR, can, is it going to be retrospective? An existing cable in London Underground is going to It's what, what it says at the moment, it's, it's for all <coughs> new works and um, refurbishments, but it's, so there's not going to be any, you know, it's not going to be looking backwards, but it's going to be, you know, from, from the point of July 2017, right. it's going forward. And, uh, and then, uh, we, I mean, the next kind of milestone will be July this year when um, when the next edition of the of, uh, of the wiring regs comes out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I mean, this is just kind of a brief history on the cable fire testing methods and the, and what what the CPR is doing differently. The kind of baseline for um, fire safety is the top IC six zero three three two dash one dash two, which is basically a Bunsen burner flame applied to a single solitary piece of cable and there is a char limit and the, the, the cable must be self-extinguishing. That's kind of the most basic fire safety requirement in cables. And, again, and to, to answer your question, Martin, that this applies across the piece, power cables, anything internal. Power cables, fibre optics, data cables, pumps cables, anything. Um, is, is, is replace the old CWZ testing? That's a different test because that's that's resistance to fire. So, this is this part of the CPR is all about the reaction to fire and how the construction products would contribute in the event of fire. CWZ is about making sure things still work during the fire. Um, IT six zero three three two part three is the uh, the cable ladder test, which is a uh, meant to represent a building riser, so what the, the kind of um, dominant test in that is a one and a half litres of combustible material per metre of ladder and then basically you put a, a 20 kilowatt burner on that for 20 minutes and see how far the, the flame burns up. Also su sort of supplementary test, IC60754 Post King's Cross, um, the, the the halogen content of, uh, of cable materials <coughs> has been analysed quite heavily because of the impact of, um, of acidic gases in, in the King's Cross disaster, which you know were uh, disorientating to people. But the acidic gases burnt their eyes and things like that, so it made evacuation very difficult. So there's a, a move to have halogen-free cables in areas of, uh, of high public population. Um, IT61034 is a smoke test of three metre cubed, where basically you burn a sample of cable under a, under a clean alcohol flame. There's a light receiver at one end and a light source at the other end, and the, uh, the cable's burnt to see how much impact it has on the incident light. So you know, you're looking for at least 60% of the original light source being able to be received by the uh, receiver. And what CPR has done, it's kind of utilised all of those aspects. But what it's also done, it's um, in the top of the of the rig, they've they've, um, they've developed some very um, intricate calorimetry kits. So basically, you have uh, the the array on a cable ladder. But it's slightly different, but the the principle is the same. You extract the. 20 kilowatts of the burner, and then you, you can then s assess what the burning of that cable contributes to the fire in terms of a total heat release of megajoules. 
the rate of heat release, how fast it goes, and FIGRA, which is the fire growth rate. So these are all the, the parameters which are the, the key drivers for CPR. And we'll, I'll just explain to, to you what the, uh, what the actual parameters are. I'll just explain that, but just quickly go through again. So the total heat evolved, which is attributable to the, attributable to the cable. So as I said, the energy evolved from the burners being subtracted. The rate that the burning cable evolves heat and the rate at which the fire grows. And there are additional classifications, as we mentioned before, smoke and acidity, but also flaming droplets, because certainly for horizontal ones of cable, flaming droplets can be a, a significant propagation source for, for propagating additional fires. So this is the uh, how the classifications work. So at the very bottom you've got FCA, which is non-flame retardant at all. The cables that I spoke about for BT, the external cables, which are all made of basically polythene, would be FCA. You know, polythene really equates to petrol. It's just pure hydrocarbon with no, uh, no flame retardancy at all. ECA, um, where it says no performance defined, and just H has got to be uh, less than or equal to 425. That end column is, up, is in 60332 part 1 which is the Bunsen burner test so ECA is the very very baseline level which has to pass the Bunsen burner test and then at DC you start to have um, the effect of the calorimetry in there so for the for the test array you can't have more than 70 megajoules of heat evolved the rate of heat release can't be faster than uh, 400 kilowatts and the fire growth rate can't be greater than 1300 watts per second. <coughs> In a traditional fire test, that can still, but that could still potentially burn to the top. So it still could be quite a, a raging fire. But that's the kind of the, the lowest level of, of, of ladder test. Then you've got CCA, and CCA is the point where BS6701 is looking for the minimum to be. So that means that. The, the, the cables under the, uh, the ladder test have to self-extinguish before they burn 2 metres and they can't have a greater than 30 megajoules, 60 uh, kilowatts or the fire growth of more than 300. And then B2CA is kind of where the majority of the higher level uh, pictures are, so the Germans and the French in hospitals and things like that are looking to that. Some of the railway, um, continental railways are doing that, and there might be an interoperability clause, which means that we'd have to do that in the UK as well. So, where we probably go for uh, um, an MSA type cable at the moment? You basically specify whether they've got to. Some, it depends what type of cable you're talking I about. We, I know we've looked at cables and repair cables in the past, and actually there's no defining criteria for, you know, LSF and, and you know, different cable manufacturers. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the defi if it's L I mean, the LSF is a, a kind of old term, which is low smoke and fume. It's kind of been abused because yeah. really, what you really want to be talking about now is low smoke zero halogen, so that takes PVC out of the equation. LSF can be low smoke and fume PVC, <coughs> which can still be quite smoky and quite, yeah. don't you know, quite evolving. Which can be some PVC which are equivalent to LSF. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it really, it really is trying to drive up the, the safety level in terms of evacuation. That's the, that's the issue. But the majority of standard pair cables, the majority of you know, things like, if, you, if you're into telecoms, CW1308s, which are just telephone pair cables, very small, would be ECA. But we may now be pushed to, by the regulation to get to develop them up to, to higher levels. The majority of land cables would be ECA. But so now they're, so they're moving, well that, that the, the advent of BS6701 has meant that a lot of manufacturers have put CCA um, into their portfolios, but the prices are significantly greater than. I'm going to ask that, so what's the cost differential to keep jumping up, to push it to say it's the German standard between the C and the Berkeley? We, we're seeing anything between 40 and 150 percent uplift, of, so that you know it's, it's significant, and that's why with the the 
the rewrite of BS 6701 is trying to be a lot clearer in, to, in, the, in the requirements because it, it just depends, you know, it, the, the intent is good because it's to, be a, a, to improve safety, but, but it can't also make the costs ex, you know, so prohibitive that nothing happens. Should, should we then just put in a CE mark on these institutions? Say again? Should we just put in a CE mark on the drive these institutions? That, that's what this BS 6701 is telling us. So, so effectively, the insignia on the new cable will be the C1C. Yeah. Yeah. For, for, for data and telecoms cables, that, that's looking what the position should be, yeah. What about across on the, the industrial market for the standard uh, cable? For power cables, you know, the, the 18th edition, this is where we've had a, issues in the industry where the power cable side have, have kind of moved. They're, they're trying to stay with traditional. Yeah. methodologies. So the CPR in the 18th edition is, as I understand, likely to be uh, an informative annex. So on the power cable side, ECA may still be the allowable, but there will still be the old methodologies in there as well, so the 6033243. We've made a, a, a mess for ourselves really, because the the, the, uh, the intention was for the you know, for fiber data comms and power to have the same outlook yeah. and it's just not happening that way. Not yeah. Really. yeah, the harmonization is just, you know, the things have just evolved. So, um, so BS67, so, so from our side, everything's gonna be much more difficult. From the power side, it's kind of a status quo. Oh, that's what we're led to understand the, the 18th edition is gonna say. It's going to be informative, but that's not to say that you know the hacking report or something isn't going to impose something different. What, you know, about the, the, what about the institutional um, BASEC and, and people like that? Are they taking this on board? BASEC are one of the notified bodies, which I don't know if we mentioned. Yeah, that, I think, I yeah. think they were. Yeah, BASEC are one. So what so I'm trying to say is, you know, generally we would specify BASEC cable. Yeah. Um, so I mean, all, all the power cables will still be. You know, you still have your BS six seven two four and, and all that sort of stuff, but you'll still need to meet certain flame requirement criteria. But it won't be the CPR criteria that. I, I can just see this going into the building regs. I can see, see, yeah. you know, you know, like you have to confirm you know, uh, diffuser types and things of that nature. You can just see that coming out there as well. So yeah. the same basic probably won't be sufficient. I suspect you're going to have to. I think. I think this is going to have to be. Of, you know, it, I think it all did really now. I think that will substitute this and it effectively. Hopefully, yeah. this, this will be the classification of the future. Yeah. Yeah. It will be a simplistic approach, so that's what we can work with. It will be a cost element in understanding that. Yeah, exactly, that, and that's the thing. That's the, that's the, I mean, I think the thinking behind the power cable side is that the, the current methodologies have always worked. There's not been really, there's not been any disasters that have been attributable to Cape. I disagree, there's been a few. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, well I mean that, that's the thinking I think, but we'll, we'll see what comes out, out of the uh, of the parliamentary yeah. side of things, because you know the Grenfell report is, is imminent now. Yeah. This is where your cost comes yeah. in, because for, system, for C and above that means you've got a very uh, cost-heavy process that the notified body has to do. Check everything to make sure you're using the same materials that you've approved. It's a very um, audit-heavy approach to to manufacturing. So, and, and you know, quite rightly so in terms of safety, they're making sure that you don't make what you call what you call a golden sample and then revert to something else. So there's a very very heavy uh, notified body present. In terms of notified bodies, there's probably I think there's something like 35 across Europe now. And any manufacturer is you know, allowed to use anyone. Um, well, I mean, we particularly have a, rep, a, a relationship with BASEC and we have, we're audited for ISO 9000 for BASEC, so we'll continue to use them. But, th but D, D and up below, um, you just have to have type testing done by a third party uh, notified lab. And for FCA, which is you know, no performance really, just test it yourself or just declare that it's not suitable for use internally. 
So is it, is it the cost of the testing and the auditing that's going to push the guidance up, or is it the... It's the materials as well, it's both. So you've got, you'll have to use higher you know, grades of engineering polymer.